games are the main source of entertainment these days. Like movies are great, but games are the interactive way of playing. That's something that, like last year, video games overtook the gross earnings for music and movies in general. Anyone can pick up and play. I mean, just point and shoot and kill people. Who doesn't love to do that? Call of Duty, one of the most successful video game series of the past decade. Since the release of the first game in 2003, the gaming landscape has changed considerably. The latest game in the Call of Duty series, Modern Warfare 2, has taken that success and shown how video games have evolved. The last few years, ever since I think the latest generation of consoles, the graphics, is, it's been about the graphics and uh, well from what I've seen on the internet and like what I've read, I think Modern Warfare 2. Modern Warfare 2 was definitely the biggest game of last year. Other games could have been Assassin's Creed 2. Sales wise it was definitely Call of Duty. I think it's sold over 500 million copies. Mm, so. The Halo franchise, whether that was last year or not, and the Call of Duty franchise. Probably Modern Warfare 2 because of the amount of sales that definitely Modern Warfare 2 came out ahead of long shot. The bar that video games have presided under has moved way up in terms of graphics, sound design, budget profit and overall production value. Developers want to make games because everyone wants to play them and the result? Some of the best games to have graced the screens of millions of people, with Modern Warfare 2 and the Call of Duty series being a prime example. So what's the game all about? The first three games took place in World War II, where the player became a soldier in either the British, American, Russian or Canadian forces, fighting mostly against the Germans in continental Europe. Four years after the release of the first game, series developer Infinity Ward decided on a change in direction. In 2007, they released Call of Duty 4 Modern Warfare, with a modern setting resembling the current wars, being much more relevant for today. This was a huge success improving on every aspect of the previous games, while keeping the formula intact. In 2009, Infinity Ward released the sequel to Modern Warfare, staying in the modern setting and continuing with the same characters and storyline, a few years after the first. The game is divided into three acts, again switching between characters as the story progresses. Without giving anything away, the chances of a third game in the Modern Warfare series is highly likely, given the ending of the second. I think the reason it was so successful is it was coming off the back of like the first Modern Warfare, which was Call of Duty 4. Um, it was just a huge game, like it slowly built up a lot of notoriety and success. You know, like especially with the online multiplayer, it's just some of the best fun you can have online. Modern Warfare 2, they just, with a, I guess with a really, a bigger budget, bigger marketing campaign, they really pushed um, the hype over this game and yeah, that's why it, everyone wants it. Over the years, Modern Warfare 1 kept just getting building popularity just because the multiplayer online was just so fun. Uh, Modern Warfare 2 just improved on that so much more. The multiplayer has improved? The addition of what? The thing is, it could have been like just an expansion pack. Like, it could have literally been an add-on to the campaign and more weapons and more perks and stuff, but instead they pretty much reworked the entire multiplayer experience from the ground up. They added death streaks, they got rid of some perks, allowed the customization of perks, which is a huge, you know, influence. You know, you don't just pick what perks you want, you can pick what levels of perks you want and you can mix and match. There's a, a lot of things, a lot of games don't bring that level of, like, cinematic... Um play you know you're almost experiencing a movie but you're being able to make the decision a lot of games don't really give you that and it's the games are very intense they're very fast paced you just keep going and you just keep charging through the next areas of the game and you know there's not there's not a lot of backtracking so it's all just the momentum of the like the pacing and the rhythm of the game i think it's very fast and i love it i don't agree that it improved i'm more of uh they added cool features but it's just too many Make no mistake about it, Modern Warfare 2 is a very violent game and has had its share of controversy even from when the game was in development. There's one particular level called No Russian which has shocked many. Here's why. Please note the following scene may be disturbing.
the controversy was with regards to a level called No Russians. It's basically you're an undercover, um, basically an undercover agent, and you're infiltrating a terrorist group, and you actually commit a terrorist act, I guess. And it just involves you going through an airport, shooting civilian security, all that sort of stuff. Honestly, I don't think it's controversial to me because it's within the context of the game. It's within the context of the game. It's within the context of the the universe of the game. You know, if yes, if you take it out of context and you say, "Oh, this game includes a level where you just go around slaughtering civilians and stuff," then yeah, it can seem a bit over the top. But with it used within the context of the game, the actions are completely justifiable. It's a storytelling device. Worst storytelling devices have been used in books and other literature. Uh, feel that the MA15 rating wasn't strong enough. Though the game did give fair warning, even during the game it would ask, did you actually want to play this mission uh, or do you wish to skip it because of how violent that they thought it was? So the violence doesn't seem to bother most people, but it's the parents and the governments that are concerned that the younger generation of gamers could come into contact with such violent material, especially in a game with this level of success. It has brought up an interesting and ongoing debate as to whether the rating system should be increased or changed to accommodate more adult themed games in the future. Speaking of the future, what's in store for Call of Duty fans and gamers alike? What about Modern Warfare 3? Films such as James Cameron's Avatar have found huge success in 3D technology. Will games follow? I suppose it would be interesting to see the the series in 3D, although for a, a first person shooter it, it might be a bit much having you know things in your face all the time. I think in the future it, it'll just they'll just get more and more crazy, more intense, keep the audience, you know, keep the players interested. The, you know, the graphics, yeah, they'll probably get better as time, but it won't ever be the main. I don't know, like, I don't think it'll be, like, some people say that in a few years we'll have true to life graphics. I don't agree, because you need a friggin' supercomputer to run that stuff. The, the cinema experience is quite immersive and it, you know, too much of it, you get a bit of motion sickness, but I think, I don't know, it's a bit gimmicky for homies. I know that they're at CES this year, they, um, they've announced a whole lot of games that are coming out 3D. I don't really want to be wearing glasses, those big glasses mm. in my home. So until the TV sets actually do it for you, I don't think it'll take off. Xbox already has the uh, just the dual camera where it, it uh, you move the game or the character with your full body motion. So if that's happening now, five years, maybe uh, 40? <laughs> well, they seem to be trying to go for this uh, virtual reality, like the Wii where they're trying to add interactive movements. Um, they will add a lot more things to make it a bit more realistic, but I think the whole point of a game is to not keep it too real because that's the whole reason you want to play it. From what we've seen here, and based on the immense commercial success of the game, Modern Warfare 2 and the Call of Duty series has set a new standard in all aspects. And based on the fact that people are still playing the first Modern Warfare's multiplayer online, a three-year-old game, the second one will no doubt have players hooked for another four to five years. Games will from now on be compared to this standard, and so the increasing cycle of competition will ask of developers to produce bigger, better games in the future.